in order to characterize subspace, we would like to give a basis for the subspace. We now know how to determine a basis for null A. And we also know how to find basis for a span of some vectors. So, since call A is the span of the columns of A, we should be able to find a basis for call A as well. Th since this is just a special case of what we have seen already. When finding a base for core A, for most students it is not a problem how this should be done. You can just learn the trick. In this video we will of course learn how you can find the base for core A, but we will focus mainly on the question why it is done like this. We will have a matrix A and a matrix B in this video. We will start with B. B is a matrix over here consisting of three columns, B1, 1, 0, 0, B2, 0, 1, 0, and B3, 3, minus 4, 0. And we want to find the base for Colby. Well, we know by definition Colby itself is the span of B1, B2, and B3. But how can we find the basis for Colby? Well, a basis has to be independent. But we see B3 equals 3 minus 4, 0, equals minus 4 times 0, 1, 0, 3 times 1, 0, 0. So that means that B3 equals 3 times B1 minus 4 times B2. So that means that B3 is a linear combination of B1 and B2. So B3 depends on B1 and B2, so it cannot be in a basis. B1 and B2, on the other hand, 1, 0, 0 and 0, 1, 0, are independent. So a base for call B would be set consisting of B1 and B2 because it's independent and spans core B. Well, I see this one is easy. I mean, B is already in reduced echelon form, so you can immediately see that the third column is a linear combination of the first two. But what happens if I have a matrix A, which is not in reduced echelon form? How can we see the dependence relations in that case? So. Let us take the matrix over here. A is definitely not in a uh, reduced echelon form, consists of the columns A1, A2, and A3. So we know core A is the span of A1, A2, and A3, but basis of core A, maybe it's A1, A2, A3, that's set, but well, if the columns will be dependent, then the basis is smaller. So let's see. Let's do some row reduction. So subtract it twice over here and three times over here. So do we get here we get uh, 0 1 minus 4 okay and here we get 0 0 0 over here. And wow that's a coincidence. The reduced echelon form of A is exactly the matrix B in this case. But what do we see? Well the matrix is changing due to the row reduction, but the dependent relations will still be the same. So if we have here B3 equals 3 times B1 minus 4 times B2, then we also have A3 equals 3 times A1 minus 4 times A2. Just check. 3 times A1 is 3, 6, 9, uh, minus 4 times E2 minus uh, 0, 4, 0 equals 3, 2, 9. Indeed, that is A3. So that means if the uh, B3 is a linear combination of B1 and B2, then that also means that A3 is a linear combination of A1 and A2. And if B1 and B2 are independent, then it also means that A1 and A2 are independent. So that means we can find the base for core A as a set of consisting of A1 and A2, because A1 and A2 are independent and A3 is a linear combination of uh, A1 and A2. So that's how we can find a basis for call A. Well, we took here the A1 and A2, so the 1, 2, 3, and the 0 and 0 as a base for call A. Our question, we started with A, we did row reduction, we found the first two columns are independent, and we got to B. Could I have taken as a basis of call A the, the columns of the 
reduced actual form of the mass degradation. Could we have taken 100 zero zero and 010 zero zero as a basis for core A? Might want to think about it and discuss a bit about it while it's possible in the form below the video.